Art Basel is without question the most influential art fair in the world. Almost 100,000 people will make their way to the Swiss city to find out what the world's best galleries have to offer. The Me Too movement is one of the topics at this year's Art Basel Unlimited section for large-scale projects. This work by Andrea Bowers documents the development of the Me Too movement. It's called Open Secret. When you read the stories of the survivors, um, most of them mention that the behavior of the accused was an open secret in the company that they worked in because sexual harassment is work workplace, happens in the workplace, hence why we have the uh, office chairs here to sit in as you read them. Um, the piece is organized, it has the name of the accused, it has their profession or former profession, it has their statement, which I, are generally what I call non-apologies, um, and then those then following that is a photograph that I choose and a statement that I write that's like a synopsis of the case or the news reporting on um, each of the individuals that was accused. And for me, this is one of the most important historic feminist movements of my time in my lifetime. And so um, I think that because of the 24 hour, seven day a week news cycle, that sometimes we forget or we don't pay attention to these stories. And so I think with this as an artwork, people can read these stories for years to come and remember. You know, I think remembering is a crucial aspect of changing the way our world functions for the better. The piece has provoked strong reactions, as the partner at Andrew Krebs Gallery tells us. As you might imagine, there were both negative and positive uh, reactions. I think the positive greatly outweighed the negative, but certainly I think that both, both reactions were equally valid. Um, and I think that that's what the piece was really meant to do, is really spark a conversation, spark, uh, spark reactions. Because I think, you know, it would not have as much of an effect if it were all positive. What were the critical points that were raised? Like, were people coming to you and asking you questions or giving feedback? Um, yeah, they were. I mean, I think that one of the biggest, one of the biggest criticisms, I don't know even if it's a criticism or more of a comment, but people were very concerned that the men who were accused were potentially not sort of given the opportunity to be proven innocent, right? Or that their lives had been uh, destroyed without there being, let's say, a trial, right? But I think my response to that is that certainly the women, the survivors, went through a lot themselves. So a lot of times people will say, oh my God, you know, this person's life was destroyed, you know, and you think to yourself, well, the women had to go through a lot to even get to the point where they decided to come forward and certainly traumas in the past, right? So, I mean, I think that it's a difficult situation for both parties. Another open secret is a gender pay gap, also a topic discussed at the fair. Joan Mitchell's an interesting example. She was very successful beginning in the 50s in New York. She showed with the best galleries, stable gallery. She's had a great career, but the price disparity between other artists of her generation has always been significant. You know, if you look at couples, you know, Shubhat Gupta uh, or at a body care, and, uh, you know, if you look at the male part of the family, they, you know, are much more expensive. and. Unfortunately, yes, it is uh, still this way, and I don't think it, it's it justified uh, to the art. I have always been collecting female artists big time, uh, not particularly because I'm a feminist, but more like I've seen that you get much more quality for your money buying uh, female artists. So throughout my whole life as a collector, I've been focusing on uh, female artists. Fortunately today, it's, you know, it's getting much better, but for me it has been really good opportunities to buy super art for not too much money.
it's whether we're talking about work by female artists or by other underrepresented groups like African American artists, there's this constant tension in the art market between whether there's interest going into them from the collector side because people genuinely want to correct a historical bias or whether they just have realized they can get a really great deal. And it doesn't always have to be one or the other. Both can be true at the same time. So there's this constant tension in the marketplace when you're trying to figure out whether something's happening because it's ethical or whether it's because there's an opportunity. If you compare the prices of the female artists, the male artists, can you see a gender uh, pay gap? I think historically, yes, absolutely. But I think that very quickly that's changing. We're hoping that we're part of that change. I think that we very much support the idea of it changing. And it's artists, living artists like Lorna Simpson, like Amy Sherrill, you know, who can make that change happen. In the past few months, there have been many women-only shows in institutions to correct the underrepresentation of female artists throughout art history. This is also clear at the fair, from mega galleries like David Swerner to smaller ones like the New York-based Two Palms or Karma International in Zurich and LA. So we have seven female artists and one male position. That's quite a special. Did do you? Did you do that on purpose? Uh, no, this kind of uh, happened a little bit. The way we choose our artists is we see who is having interesting institutional shows um, and we, then we choose accordingly. They all sold very well. Yeah, we sold uh, all artists from the booth and we sold uh, works not only that are in the booth but also from the iPad, so there is a big demand, yes. We represent Mary Weatherford and the work we have in the booth was extremely contested. We had more than 20 or 30 people who wanted to purchase a picture and we ended up selling it to a very distinguished European collector, which was the artist's wish. So we, we, we sort of scored on all counts with that. May I ask the price tag? The asking price, the retail price, was under $500,000. We sold numerous works by Lorna Simpson, numerous works by Louise Bourgeois, um, it's been a really popular, and Annalena, sorry, as well, of course. So if you mention Louise Bourgeois, I mean, she died already. So many female artists, you know, they get recognition late in their life. But you also sold pieces by living female artists. Yeah, totally. So we work with many fem living female artists. Jenny Holzer, Amy Sherrill, uh, Lorna Simpson, Ellen Gallagher. There's a whole list of... Um, approximately around 30 uh, female artists that we represent. 70, 30 or maybe 60, 40 ratio, 60 being women or 70 being women, I haven't kind of counted but it's been a, a predominantly women oriented gallery and that's not because I'm a woman. Uh, it's just that there was a certain time when we were uh, programming and um, when I was say like in my early 30s and beginning to kind of sense that there was a contemporary scene that I was very much drawn to. When we opened the gallery 25 years ago in New York, um, we've been committed to both female and, and male artists, and they've been part of our program since the beginning. And I would think we're actually, it's almost split 50-50, not only the living artists we work with, but the estates we represent. The last four artists Galerie Ursmaile chose to represent were female. Among them is a Swiss painter, Rebecca Steiger. So far as I'm going so far, I cannot really feel any disadvantage at all. I have been making a really great start. But it's just what, what striking to me is that in the very top, you know, of all these artists that I also look upon is there seems to be so such a lack of women but I'm wondering if this is just a generation above what is going to happen if, if it's like the progress of the career I don't know I really wonder if it's still like this but if you hear the numbers sometimes it's really there still seems to be a big gap anyway just one thing that helps frame the issue a little bit uh, we at Artnet News did a big data study on the auction market in 2018, what I can tell you from that is that of the 100 top selling artists, only five of them are women. So that doesn't speak to the 
pay gap necessarily, but it gives you a sense of the, the type of discrepancy you're seeing really in any financial matters when it comes to women in the arts. Many older female artists are also finally getting recognition. Urs Meile, for instance, recently started working with Marion Baruch. She's a Romanian artist born in 1929, so she's already in, in her 90s. Um, and it's been sort of a, um, a position that many institutions, galleries, museums, internationally sort of have been starting looking at, because her, as, as also other artists, they, they've been having a career for at least 50, 60 years, but have always been somehow overlooked. Um, so there is a certain tendency of looking back at these kind of positions that haven't really been looked at for, for, for a long period of time. I look back at the generations of women that came before me, people like Suzanne Lacey and Judy Chicago and Lu Lucita Hurtado who had to paint in a closet and um, never showed until recently. She's 98 years old. So I think it's changing, but still the, the, the artists who make the most money in the world are men. And um, I believe that the division of representation in galleries, um, self-identified men is 70% on average to 30% of women. And I believe that the museum exhibitions are even a lower percentage. I mean, it's very extreme, you know, the extent to which certain women artists have just not, you know, had the exhibitions they, they should have. To give you two examples, at the Serpentine this summer, we have a show by Lucita Hurtado. You have two female exactly. artists. Exactly, we have two pioneering artists, actually, Lucita Hurtado and Faith Ringo. Lucita is 98, she turns 99 later this year. And the exhibition at the Serpentine with more than 100 paintings is her first ever museum show. One of the conversations at our Basel concerned motherhood and whether it's compatible with a career in the art world. It's motherhood, but mostly with one child. I don't know many artists who have two. Um, so they, you know, the, the urge to be a mother is very much there amongst the artists. It's not like they cut their career not to be, um, but it ends with one. Obviously the family is, is really an some reason that women artists might have long breaks from being kind of uh, having no time, uh, not the same time like males being in their studio. Uh, then there is still, you know, a high percentage of very pushy male narcissists. <laughs> but in general, it shouldn't be like this because I think we do have the same amount of women artists and male artists being out there in the international market. It's, uh, but it, uh, there's less shows with women artists, there are less museum shows, and there are less collectors for women artists. Now it became fashionable to rediscover dead or very old women positions again, which is great. But, I mean, it's just a time to reconsider all that again. It's true. Uh, women are sometimes even more complicated than men, that I know from the gallery, which is also not great, I have to say, for their career. It's not about, you know, their work. It's more about how they present themselves and how they are loyal to the gallery and, and how they communicate with you and what they want. They want less. And uh, this is maybe a problem of women in general, yeah. So there's a lot of work from both sides also to know how to sell yourself. And If you are an artist, it's not only being a good artist. There's so many other aspects you have to cover in your life and career to be successful. But there's, of course, I'm absolutely 100% sure that the same good women artists than male artists. We see that always in history, and there's no question about that, you know. But the question that does remain is whether this is a passing trend or the beginning of a seismic shift. Tanya König, CNN Money, Switzerland. Mm -hmm.